All right, turning out of my driveway. Good morning, everyone. That's right. We got Tig in the crate over here. We got the kitties uh, back there. And uh, if you take a look here, yeah, we, <laughs> we're only bringing the RV. We are not bringing the car, the motorcycle carrier, anything. We are going back to my roots, back how I started in a Tioga by itself. And uh, we're, we're gonna put on about four hours of travel today and experience some new stuff. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting back on the road. Thank you for joining me, everyone. Let's ride. Sunshine, blue skies. I'm gonna be cleaning this windshield here in just a minute. I'm gonna wait to get gas though because we can get gas, I think, in Williams for 50 or 60 cents a gallon cheaper. Before we head west though, Tig has his uh, puppy obedience training class this morning. So uh, we are gonna leave today and try to be back for the next one ne next week. And you know, having a, having a puppy is gonna, it's gonna add a little bit more things to my life that I need to pay attention to and that's okay. I am eager to see how he does in his with all his other doggy friends and see how our homework has paid off. So we're going to the pet store first and then we'll be heading out. Actually we got a little bit of time to kill before class starts so um, you guys know how Sholo got its name? It's uh it's got something to do with cards. We'll take a pick a peek over here. It's actually a really, really busy weekend in Sholo. Lots going on this weekend. It's gonna be a madhouse. Everybody's trying to escape the Phoenix heat and come up here to the mountains where it's 20, 25 degrees cooler up here. But we're gonna be heading out. There's a little plaque here and they're playing some music here in the park, but this statue, this is how Sholo got its name. These two ranchers, uh, Cooley and Clark, played a game of uh, seven up and uh, you can see his uh, card there with the two clovers. And so who won, guys? I guess in the end, Clark said, uh, show low and you win the ranch. <laughs> so he won the ranch on this particular game of cards. That's pretty cool. All right, let's get take over to his class. All right, well, we're here at the uh, pet store here in the RV. I am happy to report that Tig travels well. He does, he doesn't cry, he doesn't have, he just plays with his toys. He's a really good boy. And uh, like I said, I, he's been doing really, really well at my side and sitting and treats and stuff like that. But sometimes, and especially uh, the other day when we had all the dogs and people there, he gets really, really distracted. So it'll be interesting to see if any of our hard work will pay off and he'll be able to show off inside there today. So we got a, we got a one hour class and then, uh, they will be getting on the road. I'll let you know how it goes. Holy cow, what a second week here. Uh, guys, I think I have something special. This 10 week old puppy is smart as heck. Oh my gosh, what did we learn today? Well, I'm gonna show you probably later in this video once we get parked for the night, but he does, he does uh, stay, sit, and lay. He goes from a sit to a lay down. They're awesome here at PetSense. They know how to train dogs. This this is fun. This is awesome. I'm happy. I'm going to put him back in the crate where he went potty. And we're going to go west. All right, we're going by the uh, Snowflake Flea Market swap meet off to our right. That's where Tig came from. That's where I got him from. I've never been past this part of Snowflake as we try to meet back up with I-40 and Route 66 up here. There is one stop I want to make in Snowflake real quick though, if, if it's there. Hey, Tig's gonna get his first taste of real grass in Arizona. Excellent. First, I want to show you what this is. All right, so in this exact place here on the other side of the camera, there was a fire here in 1989. It was a very large structure fire here. And they thought that it was a complete like absolutely demolished there there was there was like nothing left is what they figured so they came in here and they started tearing apart all the broken up walls and everything and to their surprise they found a cabin built inside the building here which completely survived and is still sitting here from they think it was built in 1879 and it's in 
almost perfect mint condition after surviving the fire. You know, and how it survived the fire all around it and is still here today is pretty unique. It's pretty cool. It's called the Andrew Lockie Rogers Log Home. Yeah. You know, I've heard a lot about it. Let's see if we can peek in here. Oh, neat. Wow, looks like that door over there is cracked open. I doubt it. No, it's all locked up, right? Yeah, well, it's, it's boarded up. Somebody has probably broken into it. I don't know if they let you go inside, but... What a nice little surprise after thinking that, you know, it was completely... Is that a wishing well? Well, it's either a wishing well or a real old well. It was a well. Now it looks like a wishing well. Yeah. Now, as we leave the White Mountains right now, and uh, um, it is it is going to warm up. It is going to be the warmest day of the year for me, upwards of 100 degrees. But we're going to be getting back up the mountain eventually. So we, we are going to put on some miles. And if I stop for more than any, any five minute stops, I will turn the air conditioner on. Let's bring Tig out and see how he likes the grass. Good boy, Tig. You want to try some grass? Look, it's grass. Isn't that crazy? You didn't think you'd ever see any in Arizona, did you? What do you think about your paws? Pretty cozy on the old paws, huh? You want to go potty? You should go potty and be a good boy. There you go. Thank you. You're so smart. You heard me say it and then you went for dad. Thank you, buddy. I'll get you a treat when we get back inside, okay? Like the grass? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's better than that AstroTurf back at camp. Are you going to eat some of it? You want to go see how the kitties are doing? And back to the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too hot. I always come out here, they say, put your hand on it. If you can hold it there for five seconds, then it's okay. So it's, but it might get hotter as we travel on, travel on west. Ready, Tig? Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Oh yeah, get some water. How are our kitties doing? Opie dopey, you doing okay? It's been a while, huh? It's been a while since we traveled. Yeah, where's Tara? Oh, that's right. She likes to hide under the driver's seat there. At least she's close to me. All right. Ready to go? Let's go. All right. Next stop is turning left, going west, parts of Route 66 and Interstate 40. Let's do it. Yeah, so we're on 77 North out of Snowflake. Look at all this open land everywhere. Just, just wide open. It's so cool. Because the more time you spend out on the East Coast, you don't get these vast, wide open areas as, as often as you do out here in West. It's pretty cool. By the way, these Skittles gummies are ridiculous. I eat one and then I throw one on the ground. <laughs> Woo, feels good. All right, railroad tracks. How do you know you hit Hallbrook, Arizona? These happy dinosaurs uh, off to our left means uh, this is Hopi Drive and Route 66 West, Route 66 East that way, and we're gonna make a left-hand turn here. I really do like Holbrook. I've uh, I filmed a lot here. I don't, I don't know necessarily there's anything new here to see today, but we'll drive through. We've got I-40 parallel to us. I'm gonna stay on the old mother road as much as possible here at least. Oh, you know what? I <laughs> see, these, see these white cones off to the left? Now, now I have an appreciation for them because, because I've actually stayed in one. Um, and this one here, this particular wigwam village is a little different than the one I stayed at before. So um, I'm gonna pull in, yeah, I'm gonna pull in right alongside them here. We're gonna take a peek. I'll show you what's a little bit different about these particular wigwams. Wigwams, wigwams. Got the air conditioner on for the pets trying to think of how many wigwam villages are left. I personally know of three. There's two on Route 66 and then the, the, the Cave City one that me and the kitties uh, stayed in. But this one, and they're all shaped a little differently. This one embraces classic cars. I want to stay here sometime. It's close enough to my property that I could. If you ever get the chance, it's so much better than a normal motel. Sleep in a wigwam. But look, they got a bunch of classic cars. Uh, parked in front of every single wigwam teepee. There's still room for you to park your cars, but yeah, how cool is this? Bunch of classic cars here. 
with that rusty patina that says Doc Hudson on it. Is that? Yeah, that is the same car that Doc had in cars. That's a Volkswagen camper? What? That's crazy. I love it. Wow. I bet it got pretty warm in here in the summer back in the day before they added air conditioning to all of these teepees. Oh, look at this baby blue Impala. Look at the rear end of this car. It's just got so much character compared to the crappy cars they're making today. Heck yeah. Blue interior, all original in there. My friends, Sean and Jill up at Modified in East Alton, Illinois, they recently went to the Cave City one where um, the owners are, are still, still working on it and, and, and restoring that one. They redid all the stucco. You can see the, the red squiggly lines on these ones. I'm thinking they're doing the same thing here because those ones don't have the new red squigglies or whatever you call them on them. So yeah, at least, uh, at least the wigwams have kept their popularity over the years, even though Route 66 has been bypassed, we can still find it. And of course, they've got a tomater, a tomater on the property, grandpappy. <laughs> All right, cool beans. Let's make a U-turn because it's a dead end right there. I will just mention something. Uh, if I brought the motorcycle trailer or the car with me, this particular move right here would not work. So, you know, however, uh, I, I like traveling with another vehicle. That way I can go park the RV somewhere and then go explore. But it definitely does add another element. It makes things a little bit more tricky on the road. You have to think ahead before you turn in somewhere. Uh, there's just, there's a few, there's a few things to be mindful of when towing this, this, sim, this simplistic way of traveling with an RV and a bicycle is, it, it is what it is. Okay. So let's head West. Yeah. Let's just go West as far as we can. Eventually we're probably going to merge onto I-40, but, um, I want to get past, uh, Winslow. We're going to, we're going to bypass Winslow, standing on the corner in Winslow, there was all that. Again, I've done I've done that on my channel before. I don't need to make any stops today, so we'll bypass that. And uh, I got to find out where my friends are because Dana and Steve are also on the road, and I want to meet up with them on this trip at some point. So we'll see what happens. Opie really loves this uh, dog food container right here next to me. He can get all the pets and loves right here next to me. Now, one thing I did notice is that this crate rattles a lot. I get tired of it just reach over and hold it right here it's not a travel crate it's a put in your house crate and uh it does make a lot of noise but, but i can i can deal with it what a difference the elevation makes uh we're not up in the mountains anymore we're at we went from 7,000 feet to about 3,800 feet and uh i tell you what it's 103 degrees right now outside but we still got to stop and we still got to go potties because baby puppy tig can only make it about an hour ground's okay here those rocks are pretty cool over there but uh yeah man i uh i like my property up in the high elevation mountains because uh it's a little little warm here what do you think tig tig what do you think of all this traveling today yeah let's go get into flagstaff okay oh where are you going we're going big boy you gonna find a nice spot got to find the best spot right there's lots of spots, but you gotta find the best spot. Okay, you let me know when you find it. All right. There you go, that was a good spot. Yeah, I wonder when the boy puppies start lifting their legs, because he just crouches right now. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know how long it takes. Hey, it's too hot to be outside. Let's go get some water, okay? Let's go get some water, buddy. Come on, I'll hold you. Good boy, get some water, yeah. I'm just gonna keep the air conditioning, the roof AC on, I mean, you know, the batteries are keeping up here, although I bet the fans are ripping and roaring in that compartment. But we need it. We need it. Luckily, we are back at 6,000 feet here, about 20 miles away from Flagstaff, actually. And I think it, yeah, it does. I think it goes back up to uh, 7,000 feet when we... Sorry, I'm just looking off in the distance. Uh-oh. I think we got a fire up here, guys. We've got a, we got a wildfire. 
up on our left, you guys can't see anything. Hang on, we'll get closer. I see a lot of smoke on the side of the road. Yeah, we're in a uh, stage one uh, burn ban right now here in Arizona. And, uh, oh, is it a vehicle fire? It is, it's a vehicle on fire. Oh, jeez. Oh, and the brush. Yeah, so we've got the brush fire and a vehicle fire on a trailer. And then all that too. Oh man, oh man. Oh my gosh, it stinks. It smells like burnt rubber. See, the RV doesn't have one of those circulative buttons that the smart car has where you won't pull in outside air. That's horrible. <coughs> oh my gosh. That is nasty. That is a bad smell. <coughs> oh my gosh. I can taste it. <coughs> oh my gosh. We gotta let... Don't drag chains. One spark can start a wildfire. Well, that was a trailer towing a vehicle on a flatbed. I wonder if that's what happened. The chains sparked. I mean, it is... It is fire season in Arizona. You have got to be careful. And look, guys, they are still at a complete standstill parking lot on I-40 East. Not even moving. Yikes. Yikes. All right, we're up here at 7,000 feet again. That sign says you can get to Grand Canyon from here in Flagstaff. Yeah, that's right. And, and Williams. Uh, I am going to get gas here. It's a lot cheaper than Cholo by about 30 or 40 cents. The size of these, I'm going to call them mountains. Some people would call that a, a really big hill. I'm going to call that a mountain. I like it. This is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is eight lanes, by the way, of Route 66 right here. See the sign Route 66 off to our right there? Now it's six, but yeah. All right, and since we stopped and saw a cabin earlier, a really old cabin, we have got to stop at this one and not drive into that big pothole right there because in front of us, I believe, that's the, let me, let me double, it says roadside attraction. Yeah, let me, let me see here. Eh, I can't find any information supporting world's largest, but it is definitely a very large wood cabin. And I also don't think it's the oldest, but Route 66 roadside attraction, let's see. It says, beneath the inverted Fort Ponderosa entryway awaits an adventure in pioneer history, country, western legends, and ghost stories. One of Northern Arizona's liveliest landmarks since 1931. And I'm guessing this is the entrance. Awesome, let's go check it out real quick. Oh yeah, oh this place is awesome. Museum Club. Here's a picture of it in the snow there. Oh, happy welcoming bear. Oh, wow. Look at this area. All the stuffed animals up on the roof. The buffalo. <laughs> and a nice stage for live music. No live music going on right now. Really cool, though. You know, I'm not a tour guide or anything like that. I just, I share some of the stuff that I find interesting on the road with my viewers. Maybe you don't find it interesting at all. Like this, I like this. It's like a 20 foot cargo trailer here with a bunch of neon signs. <laughs> I used to have this one. That's cool. I like the Texas Lone Star, of course. Ooh, Ragtop Diner, of course. Harley Davidson. Actually, I need, I need to stop at Harley Davidson uh, here at the Grand Canyon, get my, my Grand Canyon Harley t-shirt. We'll do that uh, right now. We need to go get gas first, then get back on the road. Uh, we got a problem. We got a problem, guys. I just lost all lights, and my voltage is down to eight volts. I guess the alternator just went out again. We just did this over the winter in Florida. I am just going to pray that we can make it somewhere here. At least we're still in Flagstaff. Here's exit 195. It's been doing great ever since Florida. We just lost the alternator. 
Ooh. Hold on, Frida. Hold on, Frida. We don't have the car. We don't have the motorcycle. It is below the line of the eight, the lowest part of the battery. I don't know how it's still running. Denny's. Are we still running? Barely. I'm pulling into Denny's. This is where we're gonna park. This abandoned. Yeah, this is what we're gonna do. So, here's my update. I, I wish we would have made it to a gas station and I wanted to fill up the RV. We are running the generator. We've got air conditioning going on. So all of us pets are comfortable, at least right now. However, you know, and this is the frustrating part is, like, <laughs> that's the last thing I, I replaced was the alternator. That's the last thing I did. If that's really the problem, there's no wires. There's no chewed wires. There's uh, the, the belts on, on, on it and it's spinning and it's spinning and it's making normal sounds. There's no smoke coming out of it. It's just not generating any power again. I'm gonna sit here for about 45 more minutes, try to get the battery up to 12 volts and then we'll keep an eye on that gauge and see if we can limp to Midas in Flagstaff. Uh, Steve, Dana and the kids, they're, they're not past me yet. They're actually in uh, Winslow doing some shopping at Walmart. Um, but he's not a mechanic, you know, like, like I'm not a mechanic. I can't, I, I'll admit it. I, I, I don't, I don't know mechanics. I got to take it to shops. So that's my next step. I'm just going to wait. We're going to keep cool and figure this out. Hopefully. All right. So I've argued and argued with, uh, Midas here there. He's convinced that he's got to lift my RV to get to the alternator. And I'm telling him we just did it three months ago and it's all accessible under the hood. Uh, we're at 12.2 volts now. So the generator is running and this little charge controller right here is sending 15 amps to the battery. Um, you know, and it's too bad I can't tie in and jump from my lithium batteries on board. It's just uh, today is going to be a lot different than I planned. And um, so I'm going to unhook everything, keep the generator on. I'm going to keep the cab AC off, the lights off, and we're going to try to limp over to Midas real quick and see what happens. All right, it started up. We just need to get, we need to keep enough voltage to keep the fuel injectors and the fuel pump going. A little different in here without air conditioning, although the rooftop AC, I can feel in the back of my neck. It's warm in the cab area here. We're, we're at about, we're back to 10 amp, 10 amps, 10 volts, I mean, 10, 10 volts on the battery, which is right there. And we've got 2.7 miles to get to Meineke. The only auto place repair facility open on a Saturday. I'll keep an eye on it. All right, I'm here at Meineke waiting. I'm in the queue. They're gonna text me or come knock on the side door so that I can stay in here with the pets. I'm gonna take Tig out, feed the kitties. And uh, it's 2.30 now. They close at six. They're closed tomorrow. So um, I really don't know. He's already quoting me for a new alternator. He says it's most likely that I got a bad 130 amp alternator three months ago. Uh, he said he has a buddy that has a van and he has to replace his alternator every, every three months because they don't make them like the OEM, the aftermarket ones. They just, they're, they're not as good as, as Ford. And so anyway, just gonna sit around and wait now. All right. Start it up. They're gonna take it to the back and take a look right, at the alternator. Soldier. Little update here. Meineke doesn't think it's fixed. They don't think it's fixed because I'll put the little piece of paper up on the screen. On load and offload, those numbers are not right. He thinks that there's something else going on with my wiring, and then I was like, oh crud, that that could be the you know the pack rat wire chewing. However, uh, so it's three hundred and sixty-six dollars for a new alternator. And then I went to Walmart and put a new battery in as well. And I've been driving for 10 minutes watching it. And uh, so far we're, we're holding steady. I don't, I don't have a whole lot of faith in it right now, but um, we, are, we are holding steady voltage right now. And um, at least if it happens again, I know how to get back on the road. You know, I may have to spend a night somewhere with the generator running and the charger going, but um, I'm gonna make a run. I'm gonna, look, it's cool having friends all over the country, right? People have been super helpful. You got the right away, dude. And 
um, I, I'm gonna go take some wind down time, change my plans a little bit, and I will get back with you uh, here when we get parked. Well, we're on a dirt road now. We've made it this far. The needle's still in the right position, thank goodness. Uh, dusty back road here. Look who we met up with again. Full tiny house. Dana, Steve, the kids, and we are, we are following getting a private escort by Aja to her compound here. I can't wait. As frustrated as I was earlier, it is incredible that the sun hasn't even set. And here I am driving my RV another hour past where I was. And I'm, I'm just gonna go park it and relax for a little bit. That's my plan. Overall, I'm just really happy to be parked right now, guys. Um, I, I feel like I dealt with this situation the best way I could. I was coming up with alternatives to make it happen. I was thinking when I was on the freeway, don't get stranded on the freeway. Get stranded somewhere close to someone, you know, parts store or someone that can fix it. So I've learned from a lot of the mistakes of the last decade and um, I did my absolute best, but I will let you know, I did have a couple meltdowns off camera. And if, and if we're not for the help of friends keeping me focused and steady, thank you, Sean, uh, Steve, Tom, uh, Terry here, uh, and, and, and Aja for being patient and everything and giving me a place to park here. I did miss the uh, Harley Davidson place and, and and all my other stops and my camping, but but I but I'm here in a place where I feel very very comfortable. We've even got a couple smart mechanic-minded people here that might be able to help me decipher those onload and offload numbers and figure out why it's not matching up the right way it's supposed to. But I feel confident that I was able to drive another hour in the RV to get here to Aja's. I'm now maybe three hours and twenty minutes away from my camp. Uh, in Sholo, and uh, I don't think I'm going to go any farther away from camp on this particular trip, and that's okay. I'm going to stay here for a couple days, and then we're going to start heading back and hit a couple places on the way back and, 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 go, and go from there. So I did my best. I kept thinking, don't melt down here, don't freak out. Um, the, the, this is as good as I can do, um, and, and it, I, we got a good outcome. So oh, I didn't get to show you Tig's tricks. I just need some time, guys. I'll be back with you in the next video, okay? Thank you so much for your patience. Bye, guys.